This is kind of similar. And uh, this one came in from a lot of different people. So we will throw this one out there. And the question is, how do I control thatch in zoysia? So this would be when you have a mature zoysia lawn and uh, they are prone to thatch buildup big time, especially if you mow them taller. By the way, this weekend, I'm going to put out my video showing my rehab of my church zoysia lawn. I finally got it to a point where it is beautiful now, but it's only turned the corner in the last like month. Man, it was hard. It was just so many things. And it wasn't hard for a lot of reasons other than sometimes, you know, like we had a, our irrigation system went down and I didn't know about it for an entire week and the whole thing turned brown. I mean, <laughs> we had a, we were drought conditions in the spring. Um, just, you know, a myriad of different things happened. It, it started out super compacted anyway because of thousands of people walking on it over Christmas when we have our Christmas, uh, they do this giant, uh, our church does this giant um, Bethlehem scene. It's really awesome, though. I mean, complete with actors and everything. People, um, thousands of people walk on this. Thousands, thousands of people walk on this, and they just trample it for the last, like, 10 years, ever since the church has been there. And so here I am trying to revive this lawn <laughs> from that. So it wasn't easy, but it's finally at that point. So I'm going to talk to you about what I've learned doing that challenge and some of the things I love about Zoysia. But one of the things is, that I'm going to talk about is the mowing height on zoysia, and I'm going to surprise you with where I go with that. But for sure, a lot of folks will mow zoysia tall, and I kind of understand that. It just happens. Again, we'll go into that in the video this weekend on the Lawn Care Nut channel where I talk about those challenges I ran through. But if you do mow your zoysia tall, it will build up a thatch layer. And so when that happens, you do need to dethatch it because with zoysia, unlike St. Augustine, with zoysia, things are a little thinner, things are a little finer, a little smoother, and you can have a real bad spongy issue with it to where it will affect the rooting. And uh, it'll it'll cause your zoysia literally to brown out if the thatch gets too bad. So you do have to dethatch it. But here's the good news with zoysia. You don't need to rent a dethatching machine or any of that. You just need to scalp it in the spring. So zoysia and Bermuda are grass types that you should scalp every spring. It's just part of what you should do as maintenance of those two grass types. The answer is no, you don't scalp St. Augustine grass in the spring or centipede, but you can and you should scalp zoysia and you can and you should scalp um, Bermuda every single spring and the essence of scalping will rip out all the thatch. So there is no need to rent a separate dethatcher. Just get out whatever your oldest mower is. And let me tell you, I did it on uh, my church project there. I'll have to roll out the Bermuda project later. It's still struggling a little bit. I'm still messing with some doveweed. Uh, my ultimate enemy out there on that. But uh, but yeah, scalp it. So that's how you do it. Every spring, just plan to scalp your zoysia and that will rip out all of the thatch at the same time as you scalp it down and encourage it to start growing again and get more warmth into the roots and all that. And you will be all good. All right, let's throw on a little music and then we're going to get into our recordings for the week. Here we go. <laughs> 